talk about performance-based design, we have to talk about non-linear analysis, and the reason is one of the things that we're going to talk about. Why? All right. So um, before we do that, let's talk a little bit about energy dissipation. Because all of this wonderful work that you guys just showed, all the research that you've done, all of those things are really about developing energy dissipation models. All of this stuff that the beautiful shear wall rocking that we saw is, is all about energy dissipation and we can talk about it. But, but let's kind of refresh our memory as to what we mean by energy dissipation because earthquake engineering design is all about this dissipating energy. And what does that actually mean? We have to get a very, very clear understanding about that because that is the groundwork that we need to understand the whole process of performance data. Huh? But let's talk about energy dissipation for a little while. Here is the LA City Hall. All right? Here it is before the earthquake. It was damaged. And then what they did, they did a rehabilitation on it. And they put it on base isolators. All right? And here is a model to construct from the exercise. And this is actually the long period of earthquake that we uh, have a certain amount of time. But you can see, I think this thing here is really getting an incredible amount of shaking. Heavy exploration at the top, and you know, people are really, you know, getting shook and shaken around. Whereas this one here, it essentially, you know, just goes on the right and a little bit on the top, you know, but not much. There's no, not much acceleration being generated. Now, of course, one could say that, well, this is not base isolators. So, of course, the dynamic properties have changed, the time here is different, and I mean, it's true. And it's, it's not, you know, going through the, uh, the um, it, it's a different dynamic behavior. You could say it, you know. But there's something that's even more important than that that's, that's happening. And that is this concept of energy. And I don't know why we don't talk more about energy, even in all of our structural engineering courses that we do. We somehow talk about forces, we talk about displacement, but we never talk enough about energy. And it's such a powerful thing, especially when you get into optimization, especially when you get into performance-based design. It's all about energy. So, Let's, when we have a structure like this, you see, when a structure oscillates and is subjected to a ground motion, what this diagram here is the energy in the structure versus the time. So as the earthquake is happening, energy is put into the structure from the earthquake, which is essentially the mass times the acceleration times the displacement. That's the energy that the earthquake is putting into the structure. That energy is balanced by various components. It's balanced by kinetic energy. It's balanced by potential energy, which is the energy that the structure stores inside, the elastic energy. It's balanced by some energy lost due to damping. And it's balanced by a big energy loss due to this theoretic behavior, which is the energy loss in the, in the damper. Now, let's, what do we mean by energy loss? Okay? Let's just define the energy. The kinetic energy is the mv squared. If you have a free vibration structure that just oscillates back and forth with no damping, there are two components of energy in there. There's the kinetic energy and there's the potential energy. The potential energy is the elastic energy that gets stored. And the kinetic energy is due to the motion in mv squared, r mv squared that you have in there. And if it's free vibration, when kinetic energy is max, when kinetic energy is, when the potential energy is maximum, when the displacement is maximum, the kinetic energy is zero. When the kinetic energy is maximum, when it's going to the center, when the displacement is zero, Potential energy is zero, kinetic energy is maximum. So in this oscillation process back and forth, the kinetic energy and the potential energy are just kind of exchanging between each other. But the key thing to note is that the potential energy 
is the energy that causes stresses in the structure. When it deforms, the stiffness times the displacement is the force in the structure. So it's the, it's the potential energy that causes the elastic stresses. All right? Now, this is what we have here. This total amount here is the energy that is building up in the structure as time goes along. In this particular case, there are no dampers. So you've got this damping energy, that's energy loss because some of the some of the energy is being converted into heat as the structure damps. But here, the, the green one is the kinetic energy and the blue one is the potential. So you can see when the kinetic is maximum, the potential is minimum and it kind of just oscillates between each other. Look at how large those values are. Now let's look at the next slide. When we come to the next slide, this is the damping energy. This is the energy that's being converted into heat in the isolators. And look at how small, compared to the previous slides, the kinetic energy and the potential energy is. So essentially, the long and short of it is that between the damping and the hysteretic components of the energy, if you can maximize those, if you can maximize those, then your potential and your kinetic energy will be smaller. And your stresses in the structure and the accelerations that are generated in the structure will be lower also. And that is what you see in effect when you see the structure that's got the isolators. You don't have inertial forces being generated at the top. You don't have the stresses at the top. And you don't have any of that whipping. And the stresses across the whole structure are low. But, in the, but how, why has that happened? The reason that has happened is that the isolators have absorbed a lot of the energy and converted it into heat. The earthquake energy that came into the structure has been taken out. Some of it went out in, in the dam. The viscous damping is And that is where hysteretic damping comes in. Now we talked about energy dissipation. Let's talk about what we really mean by energy dissipation. And why is it important that we need nonlinear inelastic behavior for dissipation to happen? Without inelastic behavior, if the structure is always kept linear, there will be no energy dissipation, hysteretic. You might have some da damping, the radiant damping that you might get, the viscous damping that you get, that you might have some of that because any linear structure, as you pull it over, let it go, it oscillates, oscillates, and eventually dies down. That's the cause of, not because of hysteretic damping, that's the cause of just the viscous damping that remodeling the structure. But the key thing is that it's the red again. And this Equivalent of healing. 